All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, we're doing another in our series of the Kintic Tech Talks. Today, we're going to be covering a new feature that we've released in the Kintic platform called Kintic Synthetic Monitoring. I'm Justin Ryburn. I'm the Director of Solutions Engineering here at Kintic. Kintic as a company has been around about six years now. We were founded in 2014. I uh, have a little over 90 members on our, our team here at Kintic, over 250 customers, and we're based out of the San Francisco area. So why did we build synthetic monitoring into our platform? When we talked to our customers, we saw a gap here in the market with the current synthetic products that they were using. And it came to one of three things. Um, they lacked the actual network context, so they were good at doing the synthetic part of testing, but they, they didn't have the context about the networks that they were testing. Uh, another challenge that our customers shared with us is that the synthetic products that they had couldn't auto-configure the test or couldn't adapt to their, to their changes in their dynamic networks that they're trying to run today. And then the third thing was that they required a lot of manual configuration, a lot of upkeep to keep the test going and, and working, and then a lot of guesswork when it came to looking at the results to figure out where a performance problem uh, was coming from. So with that in mind, we launched our, our new synthetic monitoring platform uh, with the idea that we want to monitor across hybrid, multi-cloud, uh, with simple and affordable pricing, monitoring continuously and autonomously. And we'll get into the autonomous piece in just a minute. The, again, this is built on top of the Kintic platform that we already have. So we're combining the network aware context that our platform already has, business intelligence, the synthetics now that we've added in, we have the ability to do autonomous testing. So we can take, as you'll see in the demo, when we get to that in a few minutes, we can take the traffic that's in your network and we can actually provision test based on the actual traffic that you have in your network. We strive to build this with simple and affordable, easy to understand pricing. So you can see what's consuming your credits and understand well, you know, what might be driving your cost. We'll talk about that a little bit when we get into the demo as well. We have a global agent network uh, of already a little bit over 200 locations and cloud regions that we're continually adding to, uh, as well as private agents that you can deploy in your own network if there's points within your own network that you'd want to be able to test to and from. Uh, as Kintic always is, the SaaS solution, we can monitor applications that are hosted in the public cloud. We can monitor internal applications, your transit, your peer networks, content delivery networks, site-to-site -site performance across WANs and SD-WANs. So, you know, you can look at all of the bullet points here. There's a lot of different areas and a lot of different aspects of the network, whether it's for service providers, what we call digital enterprises, or for corporate IT departments that, that can be monitored with the Kintic Synthetic Monitoring Platform. All right, so let's take a look at what the product actually looks like in a quick demo. As I mentioned, the thing that Kinta can do for our customers that no other synthetic product can do is to combine your actual network traffic with synthetic test results. So we've integrated synthetics right into our solution. Here on the main screen, you'll see that I can click on the magnifying glass up here and I could look at either an ASN or a CDN that I want to do a test to. In this case, we'll take a look at a, an example of an ASN. Here you can see that I have both traffic and synthetic tabs that are available to me when I analyze this ASN. If I click on the synthetics tab, you can see that this ASN is currently being monitored. I have all the options to configure the test if I wanted to right here from this particular tab. Uh, if we're not already monitoring this ASN, I could easily start that test right here from this screen so I can find traffic in my network again that is of high value to me. Uh, and start the monitoring right here from this screen, do an autonomous, what we call an autonomous test. But we can quickly see how many agents are monitoring the ASN. If we scroll down through here, uh, we can see the results of each one of those tests over the last hour. We also get a nice send key of how the traffic on our network is flowing to the IP addresses that we're testing to within this ASN. We'll get into more detail on, on these results here in just a minute. If I go into the menu and pull up our synthetics performance dashboard, one of the things that the Kintic synthetic product allows you to do is to continuously test performance so that you can uncover and correct issues before they impact your customers, or your employees, your team members. Ping and trace route tests are performed continuously every minute uh, with our public and or our private agent network to generate key metrics for network health and performance. So we're collecting stats like latency, jitter, uh, and loss, as well as the path information in a unified view along with your traffic. 
The results are presented here on the portal's performance dashboard page to help you quickly assess the current and recent health of each tested link. From here, you can drill into test details and click through the relevant views showing the real network traffic that might be impacted by any performance issues. The network performance meshes pane shown up here at the top allows you to select up to eight matrices that represent a mesh of agents testing from one to the other. At a glance, we can see that if any performance issue between any of the sites or public cloud locations appear, they'll quickly show up here in these panes. We find our customers' usage of these meshes vary by the vertical that they're in. So for our service providers, they typically configure a mesh of all the pops that they want to monitor the performance of across their backbones. Uh, for our digital enterprise customers, they usually want to monitor the east-west performance of the pods in their data center. And then from these pods out to the cloud regions, they may have part of their, part of their applications running in. And then for our corporate IT departments, the meshes are usually used to perform monitoring of their branch locations across their WAN, across their SD-WAN, see what the performance of those are, as well as they may be monitoring critical SaaS applications that their users depend on to, to perform their day-to-day -day job functions, see how each one of those critical SaaS applications perform across the WAN. Uh, this view can obviously be customized. So if I click on this Customize button, if I have uh, more than two meshes, I can select which ones I want to have shown here on the mesh. Are uh, in the pane, so I can have up to eight of these that are shown at any one time. If I, um, you know, in this demo environment, we can see that we have a mesh of branch offices from our location called Acme. Um, and if I click on or hover over any one of these, I can see the details uh, of the particular test. So, from in this case, from Acme Server 2 to Acme Server 1. I can see the latency, the packet loss, and the jitter as a quick snapshot of how that's performing. And then uh, in this case, it's all green, so we get all green buttons. We also have a cloud mesh where we have deployed agents in the cloud regions we have applications running in. Again, we get a cell for each test that gives us a summary of how the test is performing. So if I look at one like this cloud GCP, you can see I've got a couple issues that I might want to go address where I have applications running in AWS talking to applications in GCP. And I got a pretty high amount of latency and jitter uh, on the path between those two public clouds that I might want to might want to take a look at. One of the things that I mentioned earlier is that uh, we want to make sure that our users know how many test credits that everything is consuming, so that the credits are easy to understand. So right here on the main screen, we've got uh, an overview of what test we have configured, how many test credits we've used so far in the month of September how many are available, usage, projected usage, all the kind of things that as a user you'd want to be able to know so you know uh, how your credits are being used. Another thing that we do is we provide free testing to SaaS applications. So we've taken the top SaaS applications that are out there on the internet. We have created pre-built in the Kintic test to these SaaS applications. And this is being, as you can tell by this little button here, is being provided for free. So for all of our customers without having to consume any other credits, they can access this screen and see how from our global agent network, these various SaaS applications are performing. However, I could also clone one of these into my environment. So if I click on, we'll use Box as an example, I can click on this little clone button, give it a name, let's call it Box Test. And then I can select which agents I wanna test this from. So we'll say I've got these four agents that I wanna test this from. And then, again, it'll give me an estimation of how many credits this particular test is going to use and how many I'll have left after this test so that I can figure out what this is going to cost me from a, from a credit consumption point of view to run this test. And then I can start the test to, to, to box.com as a SaaS application coming from agents deployed specifically in my network. If we go into the test control center, we'll take a look at what some of the results of some of these tests look like. So... We've got a number of tests we've got set up here in our environment that are running the various SaaS applications to ASNs. So if I take a look at maybe uh, docs.google.com as a test, I can see the results of that test. In this case, we're all green, so everything seems to be performing. I can see each one of my agents, the IP addresses that it's testing to as part of that host name, and then what the current snapshot of results are. I also have this 
time bar here across the top where I can adjust the time windows uh, and my results in the resulting table below will change to match that. If I dive into the details on a, on a line here, then I get more additional details about that particular test. So in this case, we're looking at an agent deployed in Amsterdam, testing out, of course, docs.google.com. Again, I get another time window where I can see what the, what the history of this test looks like. I also get graphs now of my latency, my packet loss, and my jitter for each one of those time ranges, be able to see what the performance uh, of that is. You can also add a test directly from here. So if I click on the add test button, I can add a site mesh. So this is something that our customers mentioned to us was, was difficult to do in some of the current synthetic products that they were using. It'd be very manual. They'd have to go from each site, create all the tests to all of their other sites. With our site mesh, I can now go in and call this, you know, my site mesh, whatever I want to call it. Then I can select my agents. So if I have agents that are deployed in four different places, uh, I can select those, save those. And what it'll actually do is it'll create an, a number of tests under the hood that are testing from each one of these agents to each other in a full mesh without having to create one test for each one of those. Again, it'll give me an estimate of how many credits that's going to use in my environment if I were to, to save and, and launch this particular test. As I mentioned earlier, we also have autonomous test. We saw when we took a look at the ASN, how we could easily monitor to that ASN. So we'll take a look at this time at a CDN. We can take a look at our network traffic to figure out what our top CDNs are. So if I select uh, my top CDNs, you can see that one of my top CDNs that I'm getting traffic inbound to my network is from Edgecast, which is now owned by Verizon. So I select that as a, as a CDN that I want to test to, because that's obviously important to my users. Then I can decide where do I want to test from. So I also have a button here that'll allow me to decide where do I have traffic that's coming into my network from Verizon that would be a site from which I'd want to, to do my test. In this particular case, I don't have agents at these sites. So it's indicating that I could add an agent to my network at, at these particular sites. So I will just select one that uh, might be of interest to me. Again, I give the test a name, and I will get, again, an estimate of what that particular test is going to do. So again, we're, we call this autonomous testing because we're checking the traffic that's in your network to give you some guidance on what parts of your network are important to test and where, they, where it is important to test from based on the actual traffic that you have in your network. As far as the agents themselves go, is we have a network of global agents. So at the moment, as I do this demo, we're sitting at 203 global agents, although we're constantly adding to that footprint. If I click in the global agents, you can see we have them all over the world. So we have some in EMEA, we have some in the Americas, we have some in APAC. Uh, so we have a pretty good density across all of the world. We also have public cloud agents. So we have usable agents that all of our users can use that are deployed in Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud and AWS, Alibaba and IBM Cloud. So you can test from any of those five public clouds to other places, either in your own network or in other networks. And then last but not least, of course, we have the ability to deploy private agents. So very easily users can deploy an agent in their own network. It's very easy to just click on this deploy an agent button. We give you a three-step setup procedure. So whether you're gonna install the agent as a package on top of a Linux server, or you're gonna deploy it as a Docker container. Either way, you get a three-step procedure that you can follow to deploy the agent software in your network. And it'll kick out at the end a challenge, what we call a challenge code, which allows you to claim that agent as belonging to your Kintic account. The code's kicked out, you go up, you enter it in here as a challenge code, and then that agent will show up in your list of private agents here and it'll be available for provisioning tests to your network. That concludes our overview of the Kintic Synthetic Monitoring Solution. Uh, if you have any questions or you're interested in giving this a try in your own environment, feel free to contact us at info at kintic.com. Uh, you can schedule a demo with one of the SEs from our team, or you can start your own 30-day free trial. Thanks for tuning in for Tech Talk and watch for more in our series of Tech Talks from Kintic. Thank you.